Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, could I get chamber audio, please? Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to have one item of standing in my claim for self help code. Um, I do expect to put another claim in for that as soon as I get the last of the development for the year. We received a couple of payments in November. Um, for show help and um, for Because if 
we weren't going to do it. I wanted to drop the pipe off in their parking lot to be done. But, but uh, they submit miraculously. They came up with more, came up with the funding to finish the project. So um, they had a quote from 2020, for 2019 or 2020 to do the work from top. I told them I wanted to look at the numbers because obviously it's going to go up, and it, the numbers went up about 13 percent. I gave them the new numbers, um, so they got to find the funding for the rest of the money before the work can be done. But uh, that's just something I want to bring to your attention. It'll be a big undertaking, probably, probably this upcoming year. But uh, it'll, it'll be one that we'll, we'll fit in at some point. But we certainly want to get our projects done. And not delay any of our contracts. I don't know. I'm going to tell you why. This, this, it, was, it was a design that was in, it was in conjunction with uh, Fish and Wildlife. And it's, it's so the, the um, aquatic species can travel. I think there was something about the fish spawning up. Yeah, but then there was like a, a and they couldn't get a hold, but I don't know why. It's all about fish, make it wider. It's, it's humongous. So yeah. actually, our guys started, they assembled a section of it, and uh, <clears throat> I didn't realize the, the, the size of it until I walked in the shop and saw it, and it's, it's huge. So I told them we're, we're going to stop working on it until we get it figured out. So. If you talk to soil and water about that, there was something about soil and water had something to do with the water. I don't know if it was this project or I think, I think I think they're in the loop. Um, but the only people I've met with so far are the people from Buffalo Bay or water keepers on this project. Uh, I can talk to Adam at some point and, and uh, get, get what he knows, but uh, that'll, be, that'll be something coming up next year. I guess. Um, that's pretty much it for the kind of big ticket items. Um, we got a uh, Bridge in New York um, culvert awarded to us. I know that's laying down, but that's pretty exciting. That's Perry Guy. That's on a longer road in Perry. Um, so uh, we're actually going to change the road profile a little bit, raise it up. Um, so the kayakers can go underneath it. So uh, we got a million bucks for that. So uh, I have the RFP out. So proposals are due back for that uh, January 14th. So from there, we should be able to get an idea of, of uh, who we're going to use for engineering. And, and it's probably going to going to be Lavella because they, they did the really preliminary work already. So it makes, it makes a lot of sense for them. I <laughs> and so I had to accept, I had to send out a proposal, a request for proposal to the LDSA partners. Um, and they, they have to respond if they want to submit, and some of them have, but that one will probably be going to Lavella. But uh, we have another one to request a proposal out there for the uh, back room. And that's what I'm supposed to say proposals for. Um, and that one that was wide open. I didn't think we can get that. So based on proposals, um, we'll, we'll look at them and make the determination. Um, other than that, we've been I've been in the uh, next round for LDSA engineering firm creative is underway. Um, so that so 25 engineering firms in the state, they send a big set proposals there to each county, and then you got to look through them and assign grades, and then we send it in, and then as a region, um, we will determine a, a short list of 15 firms that we're going to use for federally funded projects. Um, it takes a long time because each, you know, you get 25 firms and each firm has 10 pages of stuff, so it's just a lot of reading and grading. So that's something that we're working on now that's due middle of January. So that's that's on the way at the moment. Another thing coming up, uh, the next tip round, those projects are gonna be due middle of February. Uh, we already have some projects in the next tip round, but um, we're coming up with a list of, of uh, 
other projects that we can submit for just so we have some extras in there in case we were getting some money from that infrastructure. So just, just so we're ready to go. Well, I think it's been work rather than appreciate the ambulance to John Perry to have a constructive year and undrivable. We tried to put it on our own trailer, but it's a this is a, a trailer, a tilt trailer. <clears throat> we got it up on there and it tilted in the back wheels or so it got out. So it didn't work so well. Fortunate, but we were called there and they came right over to the for us and we were expected to do it. Any questions for Denver on the work update? Let's move on to number three. Special service contract. New York State DOT for the rehabilitation of WAC Road for Lake Street. Is that just a uh, it's a rehabilitation part of this. Yeah, yeah. A little, little bit of the scoping. Um, you know, one one of the things that I know has been brought up in the past, putting a bicycle lane on the side of that road because yeah. it wraps around the lane. Um, so it would be nicely connected to what the village is doing with their with their project. So tell them all the bicycle path feasibility study uh, along with that. So I know that Chris told me last year that. that that walk was there for such a rough down to the, the inlet down to there and that shoulder needs to be paid for the, the washing there. So absolutely there's this training work I think that needs to be done. So it'll be it'll be a complete probably redesigned. Motion. Further discussion? All those in favor? Or the good award that contact you got to work for a new removal. Uh, the end of the middle of the year was a little better. A lot of people want to do that work, I guess. Is this a fairly new or just? Person did before retiring, talking to this other person. Yeah, we had him last year for all of last year, but yeah. um, he decided to not do the prices that he thought for this year because of gas prices. So we went on for bed again, and he was the only one done that did. So, yeah, this is less than a year next year, isn't it? This is just for a year. This is less than a year. No, I, I think the last one was 70 something. 70 something. Was it last? Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, it was last year. I knew it was over 100. Yeah, the last one. Sometime recently. Oh, the last guy got the last one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion. I'm moving. Motion by Supervisor Davis. Further discussion? Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Or favor? That's not there. That's why I ice. Kind of about eight minutes. I like the description of mechanical service repair information. That's just where they go get information for. Yeah, so don't you diagnose problems and, and um, you know gives you pictures of where your diagrams, where your artist is. And it's a it's a big help to our guys. Yes. Yes. You use it too? I don't use this one, but yeah, I, you know these days you never know. They change a, a vehicle halfway through the year, and you know just keeping up with the wiring diagrams and. Um, my uh, Stanton 
Lotus, uh, it cost me $1,500 a year to update that twice a year. And you have an entry code come up, you click on it, and it'll show you that there's been 500 tax reported that these are the most common things that fix this, this problem, this check engine light. And these days are just the, the cost of the parts, the inability to visually diagnose something where you have the control module this big that's you know $1,500. And well, I think it's this. Um, at least this sort of thing is uh, it's indelible to, to fixing stuff. Big lot of time and money for sure. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> Okay, uh, for the sake of discussion, then the proposal of public in Orangeville, I guess you can cover that. Yeah, that's yeah, we'll talk about that. Just wait and see if they come up with the money. Do they have yeah. a 100% name for this? Or? Yeah, so um, for instance, the original estimate was 253000 Uh The updated one is about 287 So that's just based on materials. Going up. Yeah. Well, in terms of grading and engineering consulting firms, or the Yeah, it's not as
funds for 21 as well, because we're over at this is just now. Okay, so hold on. Your the resolution. Your resolution. Um, is the, your, your original resolution is the 2023. Okay. Right, and that's what we're looking to do. So all three years, so we know we're covered for call ins okay. over the next two years as well. Okay. Is there any uh, the numbers of roads at this station at 2017? Or? Uh, they, they go up there and we have bait boxes we purchased from them um, for the outside of the building. Uh, but we've been setting mouse traps and stuff like that in house. Um, I know we had uh, somebody doing that before. It, it just didn't make sense to spend $2,000 a year to have a company up there setting mouse traps. Um, we weren't finding that we were getting adequate results or true results. Um, so so for the three dollar mousetrap, <coughs> there's a dozen of them set up there by our guys. So plus there's still a snake up there, but it, it kind of keeps uh, the rodents under control. So he's free. Yeah, yeah, he's the free range. Yeah, he came with the property, so uh, getting bigger every minute. I think so. No, I, I think he's both fat. So I don't I don't mind having him around. It's better than mice. He's not gonna chew wires and uh, and, and uh, screw things up in the radio radio room. So okay. all right, motion motion by Supervisor Roach. Further discussion. Opposed in favor. Um, Roach. Roach Terrier. Also recommend the resolution with TCCT. For cleaning, which is the for 10 days of cleaning services at the government center. That for a period of time, we don't have somebody. Exactly. So, what, what had happened was uh, one of our cleaners tested positive for COVID. Um, she normally cleans two of the buildings. Uh, this time of year, it's, it's hard to keep staff in house, of course, if they want to stay off the holidays. So, so, we were able to take care of one building still in house with the rest of the staff. And then we, uh, we had contracted with TCCT to clean the government center for 10 days at $140 a day. So, this is already taking place. It is. It's already taken care of. Everything's, everything's done. They did a decent job for us. Fortunate enough to have them kind of on call basis like that. So, for the discussion, all in favor? sewer service. Yep, so we we had a contract, I believe, with Lyco already. We had to we're, we're looking to amend this because. Yeah, the camera. Yeah, we had DMV issues twice again. Um, we snaked it with the snake we bought. We were still having issues on a daily basis. They came and camera up to 100 feet. It brought us to the connection um, of the building and the road, and they stopped because there was a blockage between the road and the building. Um, so we sent 130 feet of line in with a two inch spade bit through that four inch pipe. And we finally got whatever was in there loose and it's the village's problem now. So we were able to do that, but it took them a couple of times to come out and camera on the line so we could see further down the line, make sure there was an entry group or something like that in place. And then when we had the issues at social services, they had to come out and we did a smoke test twice. Um, in house, we, we bought some smoke bombs to the vent pipe. And then they cameraed those lines as well to see if uh, there were any breakages or anything in those lines. Um, everything is, has been fixed. Uh, we fixed everything in house. And we also um, purchased a camera with a 300 foot lead on it. So, building some grounds now it becomes a snake and a camera. 
camera was fairly inexpensive. It was uh, just under 700 bucks. Um, we're able to take pictures uh, with the thing, and uh, we can do anything from two inches larger, two inch line or larger with this. So, uh, so a lot going on this year with plumbing again, but, but now we're kind of taking light on a lot of those steps with the camera and the, the staking of uh, any of our pipes. So the issue with the DSS is, as of right now, it's, it's been resolved as of right now. Did you, did you find something? We, we found one blockage in a pipe, one loose fitting, and then we found that the wax gaskets underneath the toilets into the bathrooms have actually shrunk. Normally wax doesn't shrink. These were dried right out and, and separated from the toilet and, and the floor. You know, they were stuck to the floor, not to the toilet. Um, so we've gone through and replaced the wax gaskets in multiple toilets. And it's been about three weeks now we haven't had an issue. Uh, when I went down there to investigate a little bit, someone said, you know, that it's been there for quite a while. So it comes and goes. It does. It, it comes and goes. And, and it's it's odd being up on the hill, the pressure of that, you know, that the sewage system. Um, it'll, it's all in the venting of it. So it's it's a very, it's it's a ghost we chase a couple times a year. We're hoping we have it uh, completely gone now. Yeah. I know that they're issuing some of the employees down here with that odor. Yeah, it's, it's something they, you know, some of the employees just don't understand that if, if we knew what it was, it'd be fixed. But uh, uh, we had employees calling the health department, we had employees calling um, Jim, you know, we had a meeting yourself. He, he came down and looked at it. It's, it's nothing that we swept under the rug. We just, you know, we spend so much time on it, and when the smell goes away, what are you chasing? You know, when the smell's there, though, we're able to, to locate the area, but uh, it's been an ongoing process for the past two years of, of chasing it down. So, hopefully, it's, it's uh, a lot of it we thought had to do with, with cleaning out, um, like, uh, food containers in the sinks. A lot of the traps of the sinks were, were gummed up and had a lot of sludge in them that would eventually dry out and, and smell you know um somebody's been rinsing food containers out in the, the drinking fountain on the one end of the building so it's multiple issues at play um hopefully everything's right okay good job you gotta take care of motion Number three. motion motion let's supervise the client for the discussion Okay. All right. All right. Close. Motion to carry. For commission, we bid for two vehicles in 2022. Yeah, so 2021, we bid out one, the van to replace that. We put that out to bid twice, and then we tried bidding out a pickup truck to take place of the van that we would have bought a cap for um, over the past four months, and nobody could meet. The delivery date of, of February because, because it's taking six to eight months to get to have a work vehicle built. There's nothing on any lots anywhere, I guess. Uh, so uh, to keep our vehicle rotation plan in place that we've come up with last year, uh, I, I'm going to have to ask to go out to bid for two vehicles now in 2022. If I do this right away in January, that's why I'm asking now if I. I can put those bids out in January. Hopefully, we can take delivery before fall or winter next year for both. So, we do you need permission to bid out one that you said they were going to go and you're going to need permission to bid out a second one? So Correct, but I have money in the budget for one. So, once we award the bids, once we award the bids, we'll appropriate the difference. Okay. Because you carry it over. We can carry it. So it's going to go to the money down to the whole appropriate You didn't spend it, so it's just a lot of transfer. Right. And use it. So can we just do one? Did you get permission for the other ones from last year that you didn't fill? Can you take out the budget issue? 
I'll read one and do it. As long as I can get it. Yeah, you know. it's like a three No, right, okay. Yeah. yeah. You want to change that information to get one vehicle for the Yeah. And there are footnotes in there that we had prior information for a vehicle that he says that they're able to. So so what we're going to do is replace the van with the van. I'll be able to take delivery of a van um, because the time will allow that now. So uh, the, we'll, we'll end up getting a new van to replace the black van and then the Ford Escape that uh, Building Coats gave us. I would like to replace that with a small pickup truck. Um, that's the vehicle I drive daily, but I do make a lot of runs and uh, go to a lot of different places that it would be nice to have the, the pickup bed on a small, on a small truck or so. Okay, um, small way. Uh, regular cab, yeah, still, uh, still full wheel drive, or more standard wheel yeah. drive. Yep. Or comparable, whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we, we take a long box if that's what came through. So, but you don't want to put them the top of the Ranger? No, not a, not a small. Yeah, it would still be a full size pickup, just the smallest of the full size. Yeah. Kristen, if Mike is lucky enough to identify a couple of vehicles to the can you bring it back for the award? Can you make sure that you identify like this meeting in the prior meeting where he got permission and then that would work on the good? You said that he's out for the roles of the other Mike, or you already stayed there? Both. Both. We've done both now. We've advertised, we've reached out to dealers, we, we put it out through the state. And uh, again, we'll go through the whole process to reach as many as many you know dealers as we can. We get, we do get a lot of, of uh, dealers that contact us from like downstate from New York City or New Jersey way, but it's kind of a hassle. Okay, we're going to take that uh, motion by Supervisor Grant and Sir Curtis. Person, person, one vehicle. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have some project updates. So we've got uh, a lot of things going on. We touched base a little bit on the rotunda project that reached out after it was full yesterday. And uh, Scranton Thruway Builders is working on new blocks. They're working to expedite building the new blocks or pouring the new blocks that came in incorrect. Um, he's a 30 year plus business veteran. And uh, in talking with John Burkhardt from Macomb, um, they're, they're very upset that he did not catch uh, the issues with these blocks. It won't hold up any of the glass. So the framework, um, Macomb meets the frame contractor, the framing contractor on Monday. They can build the frame and order the glass and close the thing. We will have to build a structure, I say we, they're going to build a structure around that to keep heat in the building as we move into January now. Um, so all of these glues, caulks, and, and finishes can dry. Um, but uh, so the framing should be done next week. And then it takes two or three weeks to get glass in from the time to place the order for the glass. Um, and then after the glass and framing is in, they can then put the brake metal over the roof. And then when the block come in, they'll finish the facial block. That's the best they can give me for an updated schedule. Um, things that normally take three weeks are taking up to six months right now with the block finishes. Everything, he said that the hardest part is trying to match up to something that's that's been here already. Um, everything that comes through is all brand new material, which is different shade, different color. Um, so, Mask off. Yeah, they kind of said this. I know my husband has built, gone in and built temporary walls in different colored bricks and they've tried them. But anyway, additions up and you kind of match. Yep. Yep. They, they know um, they know we're antsy to get this thing back open. How many target are they? They can't provide a target. Six months. Because you can't get some either. They don't have 
have the employees, they don't have the workers. <laughs> yeah. It's it's all materials, it's all materials. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and then the tornado actually didn't do help. A lot of glass comes out of Texas. And we learned that with the sheriff's department. A lot of glass is all manufactured in Texas last year with their ice storm, shut down their plant, took a lot of things out there. The tornadoes that came up through uh, just recently, um, a lot of materials get reallocated to areas of natural disaster. So that's what puts, puts a delay on uh, any other things. Lumber's going to go up again. Uh, or I've got a call that. You know, if we're looking for any treated lumber in the spring, that's going to be coming up only because of the heavy snowfalls in the Midwest right now and the tornadoes of um, the past couple of weeks. Um, the center of our country, that if we have anything we need to build, start putting materials together now. So it's, it's not looking like it's clearing up like it. We were in good shape two years ago, but not anymore. So uh, the generator project, uh, we are working the campus generator. We're hiring now details with Milton Cat. Um, we are going to sign with Milton Cat. Their, their new proposal was 10% higher, um, which we foresaw that. Um, I still told Chris uh, Lemke with Milton Cat that, that uh, it seems a bit high, it seems a bit excessive for. for uh, labor to be $75,000 more. Um, it's the same job. I don't see it taking seven, you know, $75,000 more to do. Uh, he came back after revising that yet again, and he said he could save us $13,000. I said that's that's a little bit better. Um, so we're looking, I believe it's like four eighty nine dollars for that project. The trade-in value on the current generator went down. So actually, I was going to reach out. I reached out to Devin about uh, how much how much weight we can move. The current unit weighs twenty-seven thousand pounds. At the date of transfer, I, I so here's how I perceive it playing out in my head. I would like to advertise uh, through Auctions International to sell the current unit while it's still up and running. We can we can advertise and auction it off, um, and then because they're bringing fifty thousand dollars online, these style units, these seven fifty kW uh, generators. So even if we got half that, it's still fifteen grand more than than Cat wants to give us. So if we could hold that auction, and then at the time of them craning this unit out of here to crane the new unit in. The, the, the awarding bidder can back their low boy right up, or if it doesn't work out, we can back the low boy right up and set the thing up to the highway department out in the middle of nowhere until somebody can pick it up. We, we kind of have the capability of doing that to save $15,000. I think it'd be beneficial for us to do so. So, um, so we are going to sign with them. Uh, campus construction is overseeing this. So they want to have their estimator relook at uh, at the whole entirety of the project uh, to make sure their numbers are suffice. Um, numbers are still lower than Generac commercial and Kohler. So this is what it is. Um, but again, the equipment went from 23 weeks out a couple of years ago. We're looking at 56 weeks or 52 weeks now. So it changes week to week. Uh, the generators are manufactured right in Georgia. They're trucked out, of course. Um, but the, the sooner we can move and execute the contract with CAT and sign some paperwork, the sooner they can build and allocate that unit for us. So I'm assuming this is a diesel generator. It is. We're going to have to work with all the basic problems that all the highway towns have with the trucks. So, so there will be the emissions added to it. Um, the, the, we're, we're choosing to go with a premium service package, which was $1,800, I believe, for an extended three years' time, which is a bumper to bumper warranty for five years then on the unit. For $1,800 or more. So we don't have to touch, nor 
we have an issue with the generator, we call Mill and Cat any time of the day, they send somebody out and you fix it for nothing. So what's the delivery time on this side? Delivery day, uh, delivery time is 52 or 56 weeks. So we'd be looking to get underway here in January, sign a contract with them, and then do the install next spring. I don't want to do it in the middle of winter. So you'll bring the contract back next spring. As soon as I have something. So that would be three of like 2023. It would be install date of 2023. Yes. Yeah, we've had an issue with a couple of the highway trucks. That the sensor in the duct tank said it's empty, but it's not. Yeah. And supposedly there was 9,000 backfire in these sensors. Yeah. I heard there's a shortage of urea too. Yeah. So they the manufacture the components urea, however, they it's a it's a shortage so it's going to affect trucks over the road as well as just the, the everyday diesel pickup on the cattle trailer you know there is a kit you can buy a bypass on the cattle trailer that's for off-road use only Jim not in California or New York <laughs> yeah one of the buy one of Jerry's electric trucks <laughs> so and then the roof here, the roofs, uh, all we're waiting on is the brake metal, the flashing, spreadsheet metal, um, they'll, they'll get that all done. The flat roofs, they have two different crews through spring, or a couple different crews, so the, the roof guys aren't sheet metal guys, you know, it's a, it's, they, they've got their own trade within the company, so that's all we're waiting for, the trim pieces on that. Um, Spring is also working on the rotunda addition roof. Um, so all those trim pieces will match the rest of the building. So we're just waiting for those to be buttoned up. And then the flat roof work is, is complete. Dog shelter with uh, the dog shelter is already done. We can get them paid. So, uh, and then it is Kircher Construction. They did the dog shelter and public defender. Everything is held up in these 70 mile an hour winds, so we're fortunate there. I did a addition on the house this year. You know, we added 600 square feet to our house. One morning, my wife said, uh, "You think those are new shingles or old shingles laid in the yard?" And we had uh, almost two bundles of shingles blow off of our addition because they just didn't have enough time to seal. You know, being later in the year, so so we had that repaired, but. We're fortunate enough here that we had a few weeks at the jail in the kitchen over there because of the weather, but that's about it. So. The time of the, the petition over the Lake Center was one of the So the partitions are underway. We have uh, the main walls and drywall up on the Cornell side. It's still open framing. On the other side, we're running some electrics, low voltage wires, and I'm waiting for a permit on that. I just have to meet because it's not county owned building yet. Don cannot, it's actually the village, so it would be a list of cut um, I've been in contact, I can pay for Bill out to do it. She trusts my judgment in, in what we're doing with the project. She knows what's going on. Um, it's a hard time for her to get out and just inspect it, and then we can board the other side. But uh, we will have within the next two weeks, I would say we would have Cornell vacating the rest of, of the back of the building and, and downsizing to that and new area. So the next two weeks should be very busy over there. And then what we'll do is revisit the plan for the other spaces and uh, just go over those things, meet with Becky and, and go over space allocation of the rest of the area and, and then uh, and get those <laughs> built so other, other agencies can get to there. Does the NRCS ever do the other space or you know, they, not that I know that there was some discussion about it. I know you had some concerns about cleaning, etc. Yeah, well, my concern was we'd be kind of hiding the federal agency in the basement, like they just work out of their office space. They, they've got 
3,000 or 3,500 square feet up there already for six employees. What are we doing? You know, if they're told to work remotely, they should work remotely. They all have capability of doing so. I, you know, the, the, the downstairs is utilized, the, um, the 4-H is still using it. They had Lego night or whatever this week, you know, so they, they use it all the time. Um, so, but on the Eddy Center, I, I would like, um, after yesterday's discussion about the building security, I know we don't have a closing date set up yet, though. I have costs back from um, Windstar and Access Controls. It came in at $9,400. I would like to ask for permission to get the ball rolling on that to get the security portion tied, you know, tied in. As soon as we close that week, we can have we can have people on site to uh, to lock the building down and get keys and, and stuff like that and the access controls taken care of. So being the new year, we'll have funds available for for these items and we can figure it out as it goes on. Mike, did you get their um, email letter from David Mario? I did. Yeah. Yep. It gives us a little. It's a whole tight letter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're looking to replacement uh, by the 17th is what it sounds like. And the, uh, the project will take two weeks. So Terry Mooney's guys will be shoveling off the roof if there's snow. Um, the only other inclement weather being rain would affect, you know, maybe some leaking, but uh, they really don't work in the rain. So should, they shouldn't be tearing off anything substantial in the rain. Anyway. It sounds like they had materials, they just don't want to bring them on site until they can start. They don't want to stop on materials in our lot, which makes sense as well. What do you think of right information? Go ahead. The lots are. Well, we've got information on a contract for the purchase of those. Yeah, you know, I, I just said this after that. Crystal set up the contract. How do you want to do it? I just like to. I don't think I'll stick the ball rolling. We can do it next month. And I'll start on the suit and talk about that. Sure, sure. They just want to signature and they can give materials order and. and uh, so, Jim, if you give me permission, Kristen can send me the blank so we have the right name and address. And the dollar amount. If that's what he's agreeable to doing it now, but I think we should do it now. I think we should do the permission now. It's in our long, it's usually basically a material screen. This stuff should be really available. It sounds like the lock stuff is, is right on hand. There's four doors that will be receiving card swipes, and then eight doors that get new door handles. Um, so I'll be working with Lindstar and actually Rob's Glass on the lower handle stuff. He did a lot of work there already. Do you have more than one contract? It will be more than one contract eventually, but Lindstar is the first one. Next month will be okay. will be Dean's portion. Yes, please. Okay. Motion to provide the property at place of locks and business center. Motion by Supervisor Klein. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anybody have any help from the Mike and Bill using ground? I do. I've got a question. Mike, you were talking about the road that we talked a little bit yesterday. Um, we built a new courthouse. Those are just those to be about what, what was going to happen. Assembly VR was the main architect. They brought in a guy named Frank Green from New York City to actually design the outside of the building. And the reason that it's built like it is with the glass front, believe it or not, they brought this guy in and uh, they were from Rochester. They well, drove around Warsaw and they noticed that there were a lot of front porches. So they, the idea of the way that building is designed is that glass is portrayed as a front porch for the, for the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the color of the dome has changed. 
And I don't remember why it was green, but there was a reason for it. And uh, you know, spent a lot of money on the design of that building. And the, the big uh, obstacle was how to connect that building to this building, which is why the rotunda exists. And I think I probably talked about it before, but it's worth noting. Ron Herman, the supervisor from Weathersfield, was the chairman of the building committee for the jail. And they left a space that wasn't reinforced with steel where the walkway crosses from the uh, jail, the public safety building, in, in the event that a new courthouse was going to be built. At that time, as I said yesterday, the old jail and the sheriff's house was still there. But good foresight on their part. So when that, uh, when we built the new courthouse, it was all taken into account how to connect the public safety building to the uh, uh, to the new courthouse and to connect the courthouse to this building. So there was, it wasn't like somebody just said, hey, let's just do this. I mean, sure, there, there was a lot to it. And uh, the, the courthouse was just finished. And then uh, the county was going to re renovate this building next. And the last, I can remember it like it happened yesterday, the, the judge sat up here and uh, they brought in Angel Cologne, the guy who uh, murdered uh, Samantha Zaldivar up in Weathersfield. I don't think anybody remembers that. And they had him handcuffed and shackled seven different ways to midnight and uh, took him back to the jail. He was arraigned. And he sat there for a while. And when his trial started, he was the first inmate to use that walkway. And believe it or not, there were death threats that somebody was going to take a shot at him if he was outside. And this jail was the most secure jail courthouse complex in the state at the time because we had a salad car so they could bring an inmate in and they never saw daylight again. Uh, until they left, whether they were here or they were going to state prison, and when their case was litigated in the, in the courthouse as well. So, I mean, that was years of planning. So, there's a reason why all this happened. So, that's it. It just is for everybody's information because nobody remembers it. You know, sure. that's, that's how it went. So, and the uh, architects won awards for the design. So this building back in the day, I mean, it was 25 years ago now, so it, yeah, we're finding that out, but it's with having the roof done, you know, the ceiling put on this, uh, that, uh, it's, it's, it's all manufactured material. It's not like it's the standard material. Everything right. was built. There's no other rotunda or entryway like this one that they can, they can just pull specs from. So, and, and when we started the, the courthouse, of course, everything had been bid. And the contractor who won the plumbing bid was a, you know, housing type of contractor. Rogowski was his name. I remember like it happened five minutes ago, too. And apparently, he didn't read the specs too closely. And he started to install all the plastic material instead of, uh, you know, cast and powder. Right. So then, you know, we had a construction manager that was told us at the time that it was land lease and, and uh, Nick Humphrey, he has come from, from that to where he is now. And he was one of the guys who worked on, on, the, on the project at the time. We had one hell of a time to get this guy out because he didn't know what he was doing. He was in over his head. Yeah. And uh, then he had he had purchased, you know, the, the materials, and you know he had it. He had he had to go, so that was a, that was a big cluster. But yeah, we got through it. Yeah, we're you know, we're trying to do the same thing with matching materials. You know, it's yeah. it's one thing if it's one shade off. You, you know, mm -hmm. you expect that being new material to twenty five or three year old material. Um, it's unfortunate that that block, you know, the black specs, it just that the sample pieces were, were very, very small to where you couldn't see them from five or 10 feet away. And then the block comes in and out of the block, they're, they're quarter size specs. And it's like, that's, it's not the way 
that's not what we ordered, you know. So they're, they're and, and when we renovated this building, all of these windows were all changed, but they all had to be because of the historic designation. Sure, all had to be specially made. I mean, this was this was a big deal. Yes. And then I don't know if anybody remembers, but the DMV used to be down in the basement where your office is. And the entryway was like that white and green plastic, uh, glass plastic, you know, entry. And so that was one of the first things that uh, we uh, decided we were going to change and, you know, make the entryway what it looks like today. And sure, it turned out pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we had to replace some boards along the bottom side of that two years ago. The, the weather tried to rot in the boards, yeah. but I know it's it's definitely fun working on, on these buildings only because it's not just a standard, yeah. you know, cookie cutter building. These walls <coughs> are solid. They are portable back three and a half feet. Yeah. Yeah. And all this uh, trim in here and everything, a lot of it was uh, had to be re. Uh, Remade because you know they took a part of this. Yeah, all part. Yeah. Actually, when when we did our tour, so above this is the big landing. It's all concrete, that air handler, and everything. But all the steel structure that is actually attached to the wood structure of this yeah. building is just crazy. Um, it would have had you know the whole roof would have been off the place to to do a lot of the work. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. Yeah. And then these vents. This, this was the drop ceiling in here. Started, you know, just the tile with the grid. And these vents were actually functional. And then those are two um, outlets, you know, they, that's a cool place. That's it. So they just pull a draft through the building. Yeah. Yeah. You ever look at it? Old, old barns and they have cupola on them. They had a, they built a chute. And then that's how the pool's barn. You open and shoot down the barn, suck it or through or pull it down through, whichever it was. And that was the same concept here. And those rates are original. Didn't know that this hot and ceiling was in there. So, and of course, the room was much bigger. This wall was here. The whole room went right out to, to that wall out there. Yeah. So this was all, all built in afterwards. It didn't need it, you know, obviously. Nothing's changed in 25 years when it comes to a board meeting unless there's some issues. So, uh, so that's why we did that, built a committee room and kitchen. Uh, when nobody comes to your meetings, this is not a big issue. And I thought that was uh, <laughs> I didn't say it was, I'm not saying that really. <laughs> you know, when we first thought about it, we wanted to make this whole thing with the board room and have a seat for you know, 200 people. It was a waste of time, it was a waste of money. Spent a lot of money and thought of engineering when it to all of this over time. So, yeah. Hey, uh, another item that discussed now, I met Devin and Mike this morning, and they talked a little concept. Uh, we talked about change as uh, something that they're, they're interested in doing, but they want to make a pitch for it today. You can see, uh, take the temperature, see how it fits. Yep. So uh, the space allocation of many of the departments was, is a big topic the past couple months. Uh, Devin came to me last month and, and asked about making some changes to his building. Um, one for ADA compliance, two uh, accessibility. There's no real uh, reason the base of that building is kind of, you know, you walk in and the building is split at that office building walk upstairs and nobody's there to greet anybody. It's kind of a, um, it's just a different layout than, than the norm would be. Um, and I, I told them and I said, uh, you know, Billings Grounds is looking for a shop space. We need, you know, we can, Chris and I can talk in any corner. My guys can have a break room anywhere at, at VC, you know, space available. Um, so, so we're talking with Jim, uh, we, we'd like to actually introduce a plan of, of bringing both departments under one roof at the highway department. So buildings and grounds would, would actually move up there. We would uh, put up a building that would incorporate Devin's needs, that would incorporate office space for us. 
with shared conference room, break room, and stuff like that. Um, and then it would allow us to get more of a DPW, really. It's, it's, it's bringing everything under one roof in a space that we, uh, you know, that we can work in together. Um, so I guess uh, I wasn't sure where we stood on, on going out and or if there's monies available to, to put up a shop for buildings and grounds. But at this point, uh, I think if we can utilize some of the buildings that are up there, or we can utilize a building that could possibly be given to us, we can move from a property again um, for shop space, but actually building new office space up there, uh, we would like to go out and uh, have something drawn up, uh, somebody design a building that would, would actually allow both of our departments to work correctly and then uh, uh, have it drawn up and then we can get a uh, cost association for a building, you know. Uh, New Year, again, we're going to have some money to be able to, to do these little things uh, just to see how much it would cost to bring both departments together. Do you, you want to add anything to anything that? Sure. Yes, next door, um, probably about workshop space. They, they're they going to demolish their, their shop. Um, so, you know, I think that would be available to the over in shop space for Mike. Um, you know, the other thing that we can do is, I don't think my buildings are utilized the way they should be. So we probably consolidate somewhere and get a shop space out of those, but we certainly have a cluster of buildings up there that you know, we, 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 could, we could make something work for shop space. But, um, you know, I think bringing the departments together traditionally as a DPW, um, that's just kind of, kind of where things are going. But I think we, we would operate still as separate departments, you know. It is going to be gas all the time. It's up there anyway, so it would make sense for everyone to be there. So, you know, we can share break room, share conference room, share, share everything. It would give us office space and uh, potential office space to expand. There, so, right, yeah, they're kind of landlocked or within the walls, you know, they do. They've got people working upstairs, people working downstairs. Uh, they don't have any more room to expand. So uh, I know five or six years ago we put some money into that building. I don't think you know, I don't think it's millions of dollars. You know, we kind of just facelifted what was existing. Um, but something new that is that could be utilized and used for future growth would be great. And they have the property up there to, to do so. Whether we attached it to a shop and you know it was an extension extension of the main building, the main shop building, so everything's on on one level would be would be great. But uh, but uh, I, we, we have a drawing from 20 years ago that uh, and cost allocation for a building that they were gonna put on the property here back where our shed is, but Clubhouse. The clubhouse, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, but we, we all know that we just never had it. And we've outgrown this this property. We, we can't fit vehicles in the park lot anymore. We <laughs> build another building. Um, Talking about building a storage building up at BSS, too. So, the building is demolished. Yeah. I went nowhere, too. But what positive about this on the uh, space of the position of my hair now would ideally you get those stones out of the dungeon, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, we've talked about, talked about parking space, you know, but I said that would be our small spaces out here. If there are guys were parking here and it's coming here for work. Makes sense to me. There's some pluses, you know. What they're looking at is, you know, let's see what it will cost to do that. Well, that's just it. We're not looking to break ground. We're just looking to, to hit the ground with, with some real hard numbers. Uh, I know from meetings yesterday, that was that's really the discussion is, is how much is it going to cost and where are we going to get it from? Well, this could be 
you know, the, the footsteps or the, the pathway to to a five year plan and maybe, you know, a year or two, we really look into taking care of something like this. Um, but I think it would best suit both of our needs for both departments. There is no elevator in the building. There's no elevator. I don't, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it's good to make sense. We have a feasible one. Yeah. Even put a ramp in would make sense because you would have to start out. Yeah. Yeah. So you would need like 62 feet of yeah. ramp. <laughs> so it's, it's, like, it's like 62 inches higher, so for every inch. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, the cooperation between the two departments. You know, that's, I would love to like the back of the way from the road a little bit because they have the, you know, the state has their truck and the other seeders to the road tax out there. So that interferes with, with our use of the shop and stuff anyway. So, you know, it might be possible to back it up a little bit, give them a little more room or give them another section of the parking lot. But it definitely interferes with operations when they're out there. So. Well, uh, one thing that was stated this morning, I don't think it's available. I don't know that that was said when you first hired people out there walking the building, he didn't know where to go. No on where to go. You so know, it's a little confused. <clears throat> no, I think it would be nice. You know, we also talked about if, if we were to build a building and have both of our departments there, you know, we could share the cost of a great receptionist that could do basic clerical work and we could certainly keep them busy. But it would be a face that greets you when you walk in, directs you where to go, answers phones. So I think that's in favor of you know coming up with a plan just to see what it was. Like what you said, we have it, you know, not necessarily have to look at a year or two, but we have that plan for that. Yeah, and at least some numbers to get started. Oh, if we were to contract with a aunt or a building out whoever it it uh, it'll be. Um, they'll also do some digging and, and you know shed some light on some funding opportunities as well if there were any available or something like this. So they'll we'll, we'll, we'll do that work and we'll make sure it's part of their school as we were getting this to do this. <laughs> That's all county government going to share. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's all county department. Uh, we're going to two other municipalities that have like a lot of yeah. 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 We're right after emergency services on that list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we, the best of all, I'm not criticizing here, I'm just saying, we've gone from a model of shop out at Public health. And then in conversations, we talked about the building out behind the A Center would be good enough that the garage would be good enough for you guys to put all your stuff in there if you got the whole building. Mm -hmm. And now we now we're looking at so the shop down there. In the past two months, we've been in three different spots here. Yep, and I haven't gotten an answer from you guys what you want to do with well, I mean, it. Well, I so I'm proposing. <laughs> Bring up another idea here. The best situations, you know, it's it's an idea that it's bringing two departments together. This is an additional want uh, of, of building space that wasn't allocated with any funding already. That means asking for more space either way um, or different building either way. Uh, you know, we I, I asked to add on to the health department, and that turned into well, we've got the Ag Center building. Let's let's utilize the Ag Center building. It still doesn't help me out for office space uh, in moving out of the basement. So and the Ag Center building is utilized by seven departments in the Ag Center. I, I'm not a person to vacate or to, to tell somebody to get out of there. I don't hold the lease. I'm not the landlord. So I'm coming up with, with the plans that are to throw out there what's going to be best for both departments or for a few departments, uh, it, the, the big bang for the buck, really. I, I do, I, I give me three different ideas and, and I, I've gotten nowhere with, with an, even an idea of, okay, let's, let's do this. So. I wish you 
coming up with two different ideas because that gives us different options that we can look at. And so far, this one, I'm very excited about this one because if it was talked about years ago of having the buildings and grounds and highway together, um, now that you guys have brought this forward, this is really a good sign as far as I'm concerned. And we're not we're not looking at the terrorist departments. But, right, um, exactly. You know, but we're not looking at the terrorist department, so we're not looking at the terrorist departments, but I mean, it just no, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, but just to have this in the first place. Yeah, look, Laura came to me for a building that she wanted shop space. The attitude of the committee is shot down that shop space that she wants because there's space at the training center that could be used. So it doesn't clear up the space that I still need. So this is, yeah, I'm doing as many options until I get a bite on a hook. That's realistically on my end. That's it. But now Devin's brought something to our attention that, that he would like change that wasn't even part of the space allocation stuff that becomes space allocation, you know? So you know, to in your, in your area, we put two more buildings out there. I don't know who's full. I mean, no, and that's, that's kind of what I've been to earlier. I, I, we, have, we have to look at it. I, I haven't gone through it, and um, you know, I haven't done anything like that yet. But um, you know, we can probably, I will say, probably we're not operating the best we put out there. We can probably consolidate some of these equipment and some buildings and give him some more job space. I don't think that would be an issue. I don't, I don't really want to check another building over there, but, but there, there's a free one I think we just need to. But the uh, last thing we need is another building over there. Well, I'm just trying to be cautious of what's going on at the training center. We've got a lot of crazy space up there. And I think that's fair too. I mean, if you build a building, it would have some space. I can't, I can't put my, my office and storage up at the training center. I know, I know that's just, and, and he was here. I mean, when we talked about you going down to the health department, you, your goal at that time was to stay downtown because that's the central, the central idea, and that's why the bank center it came up. Because we were more central located, as opposed to being in South Warsaw, having to drive all the way up through here, sure, in the DSS center. So, yeah. It's the, the limitation of office space. You know, we, we've talked about five different things going into the ag center space, you know, and so and parking there is an idea either. No, sometimes it's not right. right. Yeah, if there's a function there, you can have a kind of place to park. Yeah, we have to have some clients of parking. Yeah. We, did, we did a tour highway uh, that we were here. So, yeah. Yeah. But we do have it on our radar to have a meeting there. Yeah, yeah I thought we were supposed to have a meeting there at some point in the spring ish. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have been easy. Just not this week. Well, that yeah. is that it's not even an actual conference. You can't have, you can't have a confidential meeting in there because it's told it to, there's offices down, down the hall. It's just, uh, I have to cram people in my office, which is okay, it works. But we also talked about you know, that free up that space at the records, you know, we can help our communities and fight stuff with our soldiers. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one thing is, is I'm trying to get 90% of them, everything we use in maintenance day to day comes from the roof, and right now I've got. Stuff I know I can have the cold storage space at the Ag Center. I got, I got paper products and building materials at, at records. Um, we, we've got things all over this place. So we'll, we'll, every, every building's got stuff in it. And, and Chris and I are we're in 500 square feet of the basement. We've, we've opened up the other half of the basement to IT, but it would kind of it, it would transfer to a couple departments. But there's still, there's, there's, it seems like there's like six departments that are growing right now or needing to move, but we only have two of them that are able to shift. So that's where the 
that's where my department, I, you know, I just want a shop space. If you want me to build on top of, of Devin's office, that's where it's going, but. <laughs> you know, I need space. So, and I get it, I, I get it. It's right down to the, to, the, to the dollar, whether we have it, whether we borrow it or what, but, but it all, you know, just like the training center, the resorts back to, we got a storage building up there that sits that the mice are chewing away because we can't pull the trigger on, on finally taking care of that building because it's, it's going to end up being almost a million dollars at the end for everything they want to do. But at this point, I'm going to, Janice and I spoke last night after the meeting, and we got to sit down and come up with a better CIP plan um, because it it just keeps ballooning. This thing just keeps growing for space allocation and building needs, storage needs. So, but we're limited. Everything's expensive, and, and the CIP, you know, we don't want to raise taxes to do it, but. The need keeps going from year to year. We just keep kicking the can down the road. Well, uh, I appreciate the younger fellows, you know, coming up with these ideas. You know, if we are doing something, then we're doing nothing. That's you know, so. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, like I said, at this point, I would just like to uh, sit with Devin, sit with Jim, and and come up with an idea of what we need for space. And then have somebody take that idea and put it on paper to take a drawing to get a price per square foot or for it, you know what I mean? So this way we can come back to the board and say, this is what's going to cost to fulfill the needs of what we're looking for. And if it's $10 million and and the, the, there's bedrock in the way, then <laughs> no. <laughs> but but I mean, if it's four hundred thousand dollars, and we were talking about spending five hundred and moving three or four departments anyway, well, this this brings a, a new building to the to the mix instead of just revamping a, a building that that we already have issues with. There's there's one more thing. There's, there's there are probably savings. Um, you know, down the road with efficiency, you know, that, that building doesn't have, I'm sure that the windows aren't um, the most efficient, the heating system, you know, there's, there's certain things that can be updated as well, so that, that would be another thing. Yeah, the, the, the boiler in that building is 86 percent efficient, it's an old cast boiler, we updated what was there five or six years ago, you know, the windows, <coughs> the windows were replaced, I bet, but our server we can downstairs, the door can't be closed because it overheats. Right. Yeah, the IT room, it's not, you know, we we remodeled the space that, that's there. What's that? There's a safe on the back It's a vault. Yeah. Vault. Yeah. The yeah. vault which is where keep our as builds for our bridges and stuff. And right. It's a storage room, it's, it's a file room, is what it's used for. Oh, this is a building. Or me. No, that total. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim is ready. Jim is on there too. He's 40, 40 years old, 40, 50 years old. Yeah, you do what I'm saying. You want to have other notes. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking about. They yeah. had that second story. It's, well, it's one of them. Yeah. But, Make it's half basement with two offices in it, small conference room, but it's yeah, not even a You could put a sign in for a set of a walk. That doesn't cost much. You have a good job. Great exercise is moving fast. Well, and you remember the point about that fall, too. That's, you know, a lot of that stuff can be digitized and can be put away somewhere off site, which is kind of a fire hazard right now. Yeah, we have a you know we have a bunch of plans and stuff too in our department that that could be scanned in. We just don't have time. We just don't have the manpower to, to put somebody on scanning items in, and, and, and so we can get rid of. Don't they have an ar Don't they have archiving grants? Archiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's grants for archiving where you can pay someone to do it. Because I thought about contacting a big or something of that nature to you know get the stuff digitized and then we can. Put it somewhere else. Or it's just 
it's, it's a lot of stuff. And I, I'm told that I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I'm told there's another well balanced you know, underground with documents and has bells for bridges. So I mean, it's, there's another one that I haven't seen. That, so yeah, that means behind the bell doors. It's the same. It's the same structure. It's just the first level or the basement level of it. So they used to actually. It's really funny. They used to store alcohol in there. <laughs> it's like cold storage. It's like a wine cellar, really. Do you do you like record retention at all? Definitely. What's that? Is it, do you do you like record retention? Apparently not. I would I would, I would like to. Yeah. It was a project like this, and they, and they look at doing something like that rather than having it up there. But. Well, we're in favor, you know, I'd like to do my petition about and you know, explore this. Well, it's can it shut your ears? Money is, wow. money is really cheap to borrow right now, and it's never going to be any cheaper than it is. And materials are escalating, and I don't see any any inflation not going to be there for the next few years. So it's going to be more expensive to build in the future. So we might better bite the bullet and, and do something right now. That's no, my think, thought on it. I think the county's at that point where they revamp built buildings. I've been here 16 years. I've done a lot of work myself, a lot of finishing work, you know, for for 20 or 22 years. You've gone through and taken care of the building. You're just revisiting the cycle. Now of the older buildings that haven't been touched or that the departments have grown and you know, we, we know the norms right right here. We have like 45 tens of that building now, you know. Right. It just I don't know. 20, 26 years ago there was no central air conditioning in any building. But I mean and very few computers. So look how it's changed 25 years. All these buildings have all been redone in the last two and a half decades. Kristen and I talk about that a lot. How and it's no different than the roads. How we spend millions on buildings and spent millions on roads. And the problem was back when I started, everybody, every supervisor was concerned about raising taxes because they wanted to get real effort. So in, in that mindset, the buildings deteriorated and the roads deteriorated and it cost even more to get them up to where they are. Sure. That so as you just said, it's a cycle. It's no different than your house. Your house needs a new roof about every 20 years, whether you like it or not. Yeah, and that's where we try to, to you know, you have that rotating five year plan to maintain, but new builds, you can't plan that until the time comes. You know, I, I can't I can't plan on any anybody's department needing more space in five or six or eight years. It was changed. Who could have envisioned five years ago? How uh, much the county would be depending on the public health department like they do now. I mean, for, for the nation, here it is. I mean, well, everybody has said it does not. They're expanding and slowing in the seams. They got to do something. I agree. So, I mean, and that's, it's going to be like that going forward. And it's like, it was like that 50 years ago, 60 years ago. You know, it's just, Nature of the game. Yeah, I think, I, and I, I can test by personal experience that it, it's difficult on our end because we see the hospital ask for a department or ask for something and they get it. You know, well, and then on our end, it's agencies though that that we need to to have to make day to day go by. Well, that's, yep. That's <laughs> That's where I, I really like to emphasize to, to everybody here. The hospital gets it, we don't get it. That, that attitude has got to change because the hospital is, in my mind, a necessity for this, for this community. And if we lose that hospital, we 600 jobs out there, local jobs, and, and just have a facility there for the, the health of, of the community. It's gonna, it's gonna be a big effort to this 
this this coming. And we've got people here now that are, you know, I've had problems with the past, but I, I hope I'm, we're doing the right thing again. They've got to make money or got to at least try to break even. And we've got new people in there with new ideas, and they're trying to do it, trying to do it. And it's a, it's a, it's a revenue game that the state and Medicare and Medicaid and everything just keep cutting away at. But by the way, I believe it's something in me. And when people look at that and compare it, us to them, we're two different. I, we are two different entities. I mean, that's, that's, I'm not that's trying whole, to bad whole 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 hospital. What I'm trying to say is, is that they're constantly expanding or growing. That's, it's the same, but it seems they do that at a rapid pace. Or we have it on our end, well, but we need to. We did, we, that's for revenue exactly. generation. Exactly. They're expanding to generate revenue and keep the hospital viable. So it's a non starter. Like Stan said, you were doing great right up until you, you mentioned the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're all the same. We're all the county, the county owns the hospital, it's a lovely place. Yeah. 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 It's an idea. I get it. I get what you're saying. But we got to start. And, and the hospital's competing with the private sector. And it's to be generating revenue. Down here, and I'm not trying to say we're, we're, we're cutting more from people. We always have a couple. I'm not going to add that. And, and you guys, and that's why you're in 10 different places. That's what it was never. It was never Thought of, you know, and never put together in the right way to start with. And I, I'll give you a pause here that you do need to do it. But I, I can't do it all overnight. And it's, it's, or not to be mean to you or anybody else in the county, you're not revenue generating, you're, you're a tax liability. <clears throat> and that's what it comes down to. And it's, it's, a, it's a shitty, Game of my eyes. I, I hate trying to get a bed and do everything like that, but it's what comes down to my eyes. We're not here generating stuff. We're, we're the cost of the taxpayer down here. And that's why everybody looks at us and points out why, why are you guys doing this? Why are you doing that? And they're doing it the same to ask them, but that's something that's, that's a whole other animal fighting, fighting with the private sector trying to make money. And, and, we're trying to keep a tenant on the water. It's like, if it broke even, we'd all be better off and we'd all be a lot easier to take care of things down here. But that thing is, it's only the worst in my eyes is the state and Medicare insurances just keep cutting, cutting back and making like harder and harder to produce the health care that we have. And it's kind of funny. But I don't want like the idea of me versus them. In my eyes, it's not a me versus them. We're all one. And we just think, yes, we do handle things different down here and here. I'm not going to like that. But that's my reason behind it. Okay, well, we got you that. So let's uh, <laughs> let everyone get all the paper. And Resolution and signing because we might have permission to vote. I think a vote would be great. Vote. To give him permission to proceed with some lines. Okay. It's a motion. Uh, the motion of our supervisor Klein to invite the deputy commissioner to explore the idea of combining the building uh, the grounds and highlighting it in the same location. That's it. Although, is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carry it. Thank you, Mark. You're a fellow. So, thank you. Good thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, then? Anything else from my government? If not, I'd like to say, 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 I'd like to <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Okay, standing here. Yes. <laughs>
Well, you might just see me pull in your driveway and say hi one of these days. That's all right. I'm going to come on by. I see you out there. <laughs> yep. That's a good pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, sir. I have some of the people who are in the garage. All right. I'm going to say, you know, 